All right, everyone, welcome to the Saturday special. Glad you're here, and I hope your weekend is off to a steady start. There has been a lot happening across Web3 this week, and I have been going through the updates with a mix of curiosity and genuine excitement. Some of these stories hint at where the next wave of on chain innovation might come from. Others show how the data behind major networks is getting clearer. And one of them digs into how AI investment is shaping the world's biggest economy. So we have got plenty to get into today. Before we jump into the stories, a quick request. If you enjoy Ledger Life and want to help keep this show running, consider dropping a small donation to support the channel. Every contribution helps us grow and keeps these deep dives coming. Thank you to everyone who has helped already. Let's get into the lineup, starting with Caffeine's new roadmap and what it means for builders on ICP. Caffeine has released its roadmap through mid-December, and it's one of the clearest signals yet of how they want on-chain building to evolve. The plan lays out both the core upgrades and the premium tools the platform is preparing. And it speaks to something bigger happening at the intersection of AI and decentralized infrastructure. The code list starts with instruction by click inside the app interface. Instead of typing long descriptions for what you want to change in your app, you will be able to click directly on the live interface inside Caffeine and let the AI update that specific element. It's the kind of tweak that may sound simple, but can save creators a lot of time when refining layouts or fixing small issues. There is also a Motoko language upgrade, an overall UX refresh, and GitHub export for people who want a clean workflow between Caffeine and their repositories. Then come the premium features, that is domain buying and hosting, email sending capabilities for apps, built-in analytics and a few extra items that haven't been revealed yet. Put together, this list gives users ways to go from idea to finished product inside a single environment. The reaction on X was lively. Several users pointed out that the caffeine is beginning to look like a consumer-focused on-chain builder. A few said it is pulling together AI, interface control, hosting, domains, and analytics in a way that removes the need for traditional server setups. Dom joined the discussion and added more technical detail. He said the team hopes to bring the execution environment to WASI. If that works, developers could run NPM integrations and node libraries directly on-chain. That would make it easier for apps built on Caffeine to connect with outside services such as social platforms or enterprise tools. One of the features people talked about most was analytics. Dom said it's essential for anyone running a commercial app. While you can already plug in tools like Google Analytics, Caffeine wants to give users built-in app analytics without requiring any setup. The instruction by click feature also drew a lot of attention. Dom said the goal is to let creators simply click on a part of their interface rather than explaining it through long messages. Beyond the roadmap itself, Dom posted a second thread sharing a broader view of where things are heading. He said self-writing cloud services could become one of the largest segments of the non-GPU cloud market. The idea is that as generative AI improves and as frameworks like Caffeine mature, more app creation and maintenance will be handled automatically. If that happens, platforms built around AI-led development could see a sharp rise in usage. For now, the roadmap lays the groundwork. The next few weeks will show how these features come together and how well they support builders who want faster and more intuitive ways to create on-chain apps. Next, let's move to another story. A new internal snapshot from an upgraded ICP beta engine has given a fresh look at whale activity from the network's earliest days. The tool reconstructs on-chain data back to Genesis, and it's designed to provide a much clearer read on long-term volume behavior, especially among the largest holders. According to the early snapshot, whale holdings dropped by around a quarter between launch and the first quarter of 2024. After that initial adjustment, holdings stabilized with only small movements since then. The team behind the data engine says this is the most complete historical view they have released so far 
and it's meant to correct earlier data sets that showed only partial information. One of the key upcoming features is a timeline tracking the number of whale addresses. This is something analysts have been asking for because previous attempts to map whale activity relied on scattered records. A continuous timeline could give traders and researchers a better sense of distribution trends, selling pressure, and long-term holder behavior. It's important to understand that whale data can be interpreted in different ways. Some analysts say a decline in whale concentration is a sign of improving distribution. Others point out that early drops can simply reflect token unlocks, moves to new wallets, or normal rotation during the first months of a network's life. A reduction in whale supply does not automatically mean increased demand from smaller holders without other indicators to support it. Context matters. For example, exchange flows, retail participation, developer traction, and staking patterns all influence how these trends should be read. Still, having a cleaner, complete data set is a step forward for anyone who studies ICP's on-chain structure. When the full engine goes public, it should give the community a much more reliable baseline for comparing old cycles with new ones. For now, the preview gives a useful look at how the earliest supply shifted and where things eventually leveled out. Finally, claims that AI is carrying the US economy have been gaining traction. And while that statement may be bold, there is a good reason people are talking about it. Data center construction and AI-focused investment have surged over the past few years. These projects have provided enough momentum to influence national growth figures at a time when several other sectors have been struggling. Spending on data centers has risen sharply, far outpacing the small increases seen across many other commercial building categories, such as offices, retail spaces, and industrial facilities. Analysts monitoring investment trends say data centers have become one of the strongest drivers of private fixed investment through early 2025. Some economists argue that without this burst of AI-related spending, the U.S. growth picture would look far weaker. In the first half of the year, AI-driven investment appears to have provided a large share of the overall GDP increase. If you strip it out, growth comes close to stalling. That suggests the wider economy is finding it hard to generate its own momentum. There are further details that matter when you examine the numbers more closely. A large portion of the equipment required for AI infrastructure is imported, which reduces the domestic economic benefit. Employment growth in many sectors has also lagged behind, raising questions about how broad or narrow the recovery actually is. In other words, construction activity and hardware spending are holding up the data center boom, but this hasn't been matched by stronger gains across the wider labor market. The broader debate centers on whether this investment wave is a temporary surge or the beginning of a longer transformation. Supporters say today's build-out will pay off in the form of productivity gains, automation, and new industries. Critics warn that the U.S. may have become too dependent on one category of spending, creating an uneven economy where a single trend props up growth while other areas weaken. What's clear is that AI-related spending is currently giving the U.S. economy a noticeable lift. The question is whether this lift spreads across other sectors or whether growth rests on a very narrow foundation. The next year will make that clearer as demand interest rates, and tech investment patterns shift. That wraps up this Saturday special. Three very different stories, but all pointing to the same broader theme. AI and on-chain infrastructure continues to shape how technology evolves, how networks function, and even how economies grow. If you want to explore any of the projects mentioned today, all the links are in the description. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting Ledger Life, and I'll see you in the next episode.